Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. I have just finished making the Play-Doh from the recipe that I've attached. Now with this Play-Doh, I did not add any food coloring. That is absolutely optional. Um, so this is just the regular white. If you wanna add food coloring, that's great, but it's definitely not something you need to do for the purposes of this assignment, okay? So um, when you're working with this, we're gonna use it just like clay, but it's gonna feel a little bit different than clay. It's a little bit more dry. Um, and it might crumble on you a little bit more than you're used to, but uh, we're going to do our best anyway. Okay, so before the school closure, we were working with coil. We were finishing up our vases using that unexposed coil technique where you smooth the coils so that you can't see them. Um, what we were going to start after that was uh, exposed coils, which is where you can actually see the coils and we're not actually smoothing them. So I'm gonna show you guys 10 different types of exposed coils that you can make. And if you could just follow along at home uh, using your own Play-Doh that you make at home or that you go out and buy, uh, maybe you already had some type of clay or Play-Doh around the house, then that would be great. So I'm gonna get started here. I'm going to start out with a coil shape already. So this is the same way that you start to make a coil with your regular ceramic clay. Okay, so I've essentially made a coil already. It's just a really fat coil before I've even started rolling. Okay, you know that I like to start um, away from me and roll towards me because it has a tendency to make less lopsided coils. But if you want, you're welcome to just roll back and forth and back and forth and just kind of spread as you go your fingers. If it gets a little bit too long to work with, you can cut it off. I'm working on a cutting board, but you could work on um, any flat surface. So your kitchen table, or maybe you want to put like a sheet pan down. Okay. And I want to keep going until this coil is about the thickness of my pinky finger, maybe a little bigger than that. Okay, we want sort of small coils. So the first coil that I'm going to do is a spiral. I'm only going to use maybe about half of that, a couple inches there. And I'm just going to take my coil, the end of my coil, I can kind of pinch it in. And then I'm going to go ahead and Hold it and just spin this up like a snail shell or a little cinnamon bun. Okay, there's my spiral. I can also do a double spiral where I'm going to take one end here and I'm going to fold it in and roll it up like the first spiral, but I'm only going to go about halfway. Then I'm going to do on the other side, fold it in and roll it up. And there's my double spiral. Okay, so that was number one. Number two, second coil I'm going to do is going to be a wave. So again, I'm going to start out with a coil here. Again, I want nice small coils about the size of my pinky. And I'm going to take this coil and I'm going to fold it at about an inch. Then once it reaches the end of that first fold, I'm going to fold it back up. Once it reaches the end of that fold there, I'm going to fold it back down. And I'm just going to go back and forth like a zigzag to create this wave. For the third type of coil, I'm going to do what I call U's and C's. I'm going to need just small pieces of coil for this.
Okay, so I'm just going to break these into about two inch pieces. I want them all the same size. And then I'm just going to fold it into a U shape. And I can do these up and down and to the side in a row like that. You can do big ones or small ones. All right, my fourth type of coil is actually not going to be a coil at all. It's going to be these little spheres of clay. I like to call them buttons because it sounds a lot better than balls. You can do these again, big or small. I want them roughly about the same size. I think I'm gonna go a little smaller. And these could be a row or I could make some type of design with these like a flower. Okay. And the fifth type of coil this is going to include these buttons. But I'm going to do a wave like I did before. This wave here, same thing. But each time that I do a curve, each time I bend the coil for the wave, then I'm going to put a little button in between each one of those. Okay, and that could be used for another row of construction. I cleared a little bit of space for myself here. Uh, one thing I have been noticing, the more that I work with this, um, it is drying out a little bit. Uh, if you are noticing this cracking on you a lot and drying out a lot, what you can do is you can create a little uh, crevice in the middle and just pour a very small amount of water, very, very small amount into that center. And then you can whoop, fold it and knead the dough. And that should make it a little bit more smooth. Okay. You want to be cautious when you're doing this though, not to add too much water. All right. Just enough to bring it back to life a little bit. So uh, the next one that I'm going to do, next coil I'm going to do, this is going to be number six. I'm going to make a coil. And I'm going to make donuts. Now, when you make these donuts, one thing you want to keep in mind is think about this as you're building a pot using these techniques, using these different types of coils. So when you're building, if you were to make donuts and build with these donuts, I've got that hole in the center there. And I probably don't want to have a bunch of holes in my vase, right? So one thing you could do is you could use those buttons and fill the center with a button. Otherwise, you could um, use this donut method if you wanted to keep it with that hole in the center. Maybe you're making like a lantern or something where you actually want to have those holes there. Okay. 
Again, we want to try to keep things roughly the same size, which I'm doing a terrible job at, as you can see. It got smaller and smaller. Coil number seven. You can see here that I have multiple coils that I've made. And I want them to be maybe two or three inches. And I'm going to create some arches here. I'm just going to layer these coils on top of each other. And I could even go with a knife and cut them. So I've got a nice even cut there. like that. That's how I make arches. And you always want to find ways to fill empty space when you're constructing with coils. So one thing I could do is I could make a button. Buttons are always really good for this to fill in that empty space. Or I could use a coil, like a V-shaped coil, and put that there. Maybe I even want to do a V-shaped coil and a button in between these. Just always thinking about ways that you could fill in the space that goes around so we don't have big gaps. All right, for number eight, I'm going to start using multiple colors here. So I have created some blue and some red Play-Doh for my next coils. Start out the same way we did before. Roll it. And I want a nice long coil. Again, about the thickness of my pinky. I want my coils all to be the same size for this because I'm going to show you how to do two different braids. I'm going to do a traditional braid and a twist braid. Now, if you know how to braid hair, then this should come pretty naturally to you. If you don't, then you may learn something. Okay, so let's start out with the twist. The twist is gonna be the easier braid. And I'm just going to take both ends and I'm just gonna go ahead and literally twist the clay here. And I just wanted to do two different colors here so you could see that nicely. Okay, so there's a twist braid. All right, number nine. Uh, this is the traditional braid. For this braid, I need three strands. I want them all to be the same size of coil. So I've got my three colors again, uh, just so you could see the difference in the braid I'm making. And I'm gonna start by putting these three pieces together. And I'm going to just switch off the outer piece going to the middle. Okay, so here I have the red on the outside. I'm going to go to move it to the middle. Okay, now these are my outer pieces. Blue hasn't moved yet, so I'm going to go ahead and move it to the middle. Now blue is in the middle. Red and white are my outer pieces. Go ahead and move 
white to the middle. Moving red. Moving blue. White. Red. Blue. Okay, the most difficult part of this method is just trying not to break your coils. Okay, and there's my traditional braid as compared to my twist braid. Number 10, last one I want to show you guys is going to be uh, horizontal and vertical coils. And um, these coils are going to be short coils. So I'm going to use my knife here to cut just a bunch of one inch pieces. Again, just to make things look nice. I want to make my coils all about the same size. Okay, go ahead and throw some red in there. Now this could be a row on its own. Okay, if you wanted to do a row of these vertical coils going around your container. Or you could mix it up and do them in different directions like we did with the U's and the C's. So I'm gonna do that here and go up with the red and to the side with the blue. All right, and there we have it. That's 10 different types of coils that you can make using your Play-Doh. Please send in pictures of your finished products. I would love to see all your finished work, okay? So here are all of my finished different types of coils. Um, if you could send a picture similar to this, um, that is what I'm looking for is just a image of all the different types of coils that you've tried. Um, again, I just threw some color in there for fun, but if you're just doing one solid color of dough, then that is absolutely fine. The colors are not required for this assignment. Okay. Um, remember when you are finished with these, then you want to make sure to preserve the dough that you're going to put the dough back into a Ziploc bag so that it still stays fresh. If you leave it out, it's gonna dry out and get like crusty. Um, if you wanted, you could even bake these and they would um, end up becoming hard and you could even paint them and they'll keep forever basically. Um, but if not, if you wanted to reuse the Play-Doh, then you wanna make sure to put it in a Ziploc bag and um, it should keep for a couple months in the plastic bag. Okay, and remember, if you need to re-wet it, you could always use a little bit of water, but you want to be really sparing um, when you're adding that water into your Play-Doh. All right, until next time, see you guys later.